You're listening to B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro, the place to learn about new technology and technological advances before they become mainstream. This podcast is sponsored by Ingram Micro's President's Club, where winners are made. All right, let's get into the show. Welcome to B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro. I'm your host, Carrie Roberts, and today I have two wonderful guests. They are Jen Daly Grass and Steve Procknell of Jen and Steve Speak. Welcome. Excited to have you all here today. Thank, Thank you for having you, us, Carrie. Carrie. So you both do presentations for Inger Micro through the Wellness Committee on things like mindfulness, how to manage stress, how to be grateful, things of that nature. And you're both yoga instructors, you've been athletes, and you've also been a part of some incredible community-based wellness programs like Yogis in Service, The November Project, and Girls on the Run. And I'd love it if you could give us some background on these services and what you've seen since you started investing your time into these projects. Sure. Well, I first of all, thanks for having us so much, Carrie. We're thrilled to be here. And I'll speak first to Girls on the Run. So something that I feel really passionately about is working with women and girls. And I've had the opportunity to teach some yoga to some of the Girls on the Run teams, which has been great, and also be involved in some of their local fundraising efforts here. They have a really strong chapter here in Buffalo, and it's also a national organization. And personally, one of my daughters has participated too, so I've really seen firsthand how it positively impacts girls' self-confidence, self-esteem, and it's actually a lot of the same positive messages that we try to share in yoga. So I feel like there's a lot of overlap there and it's just very inclusive. They also do a lot in the community to provide shoes, even for girls who might not be able to otherwise afford the shoes or the tuition fee to participate. So it's, it's really a great program. And Steve, what about you? Uh, for myself with Yogis in Service, Yogis in Service provides yoga into areas where maybe they can't afford it or it's not provided. So I've been able to teach in prisons now for three years and also I taught uh, veterans with PTSD and substance abuse for four years. And being a guy, I get to help share yoga into the male community and, and give them a, another tool in their toolbox. Most guys want to pick up a dumbbell and said, we're rolling out our yoga mats. And so I get to teach, uh, a lot of times it's mostly men, a new ways to move their body, new ways to experience themselves, and also just building confidence uh, in, in a new way. And uh, for me, that just, it's so great to see that and, and coming from from me to them is, is really an extraordinary opportunity. And I've seen so much growth over the years of guys look at me and just be like, I don't know why I didn't try that sooner. Or I didn't expect that to happen. Or like, whoa, what just happened? And I, I love seeing that surprise on somebody's face for doing something that they never thought they would do and then trying it out. And it allows them to be in that surprise element of inquiry of like, what else should I try? And uh, it's so important for, for our overall wellness. With November Project, uh, we, we work out every Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. Obviously, with the quarantine, we've been doing Zoom. But it allows people, especially in a place like Buffalo, to get outside no matter what uh, uh, at 6 a.m. And it breaks down those barriers. If the weather's bad, I don't work out or I don't go outside. And it's also an access for people to meet adult friends, which is really cool. You get to meet people in your city, meet people in your community. And then you're doing it through movement, which just helps boost your mood. So it's more inviting if you're maybe not at a bar, but out moving, doing you know, lunges or air squats or running, it's way easier to say, hey, how are you? And then people are just way more open. And so we've seen so many people become friends over that and also try new things. Maybe they, they've never been a runner and they go run their first 5K or they've never signed up for a, a Spartan race or a Tough Mudder or gone stand up paddle boarding or whatever that is. And they say, well, if I can do this, then I can do that. And we've seen a lot of growth in that. So both of them really being community oriented and giving people access to something maybe they've never had before. Now, I'm curious, what brought the two of you together? Why did you decide to work <laughs> together? Because you have similar but very different backgrounds, as well as why did you choose corporate wellness? We do. Should we tell Go the real it, story here, Steve? <laughs> you, should, you should tell the real story because I feel like it's important for people it is to know Im yeah. that surprises um, are good. So I, I moved to Buffalo about, it's been about six and a half years ago now. My husband is originally from here and we, we moved a lot of different places and then came back with our three kids. I had been a yoga instructor in Toronto before 
um, that, which is where we lived before. And then when I came here, PY, Power Yoga Buffalo, PYB, um, was still relatively small compared to where it is today. And I was practicing when I'd come back to visit Buffalo and then, you know, found out, fortunately, I was going to have the opportunity to teach. Steve, I think I just started teaching there. Um, but Steve didn't like me when I first showed up. <laughs> I didn't really know, but I guess we actually weren't friends at first. That was the threat. There was the threat of a new <laughs> teacher and I wanted to get classes and Jen was this seasoned teacher. I was like, wait a second. I want these classes. And so I was not open at that point in my life to, you know, to seeing Jen for who she was is like the kindest person ever. So that's how it really started. Yeah. So I thought we were friends, but actually Steve really didn't like me. And <laughs> eventually we seemed to move past that. And um, yeah, actually, I'm, you know, it's really been great. We've been so now working together for about six years. And I think what we found is despite our different backgrounds, we are just totally aligned on the power of the messages of yoga and wellness. And also both of us really just love people. So I feel like that's really where we connected, even though we're coming from different places. I, I'm married, I have kids and you know, my background was not, I was not the super athlete at all that Steve was the, probably the furthest thing from it. Um, and I, I was an accountant and very different background. And um, I'm just really, I'm, I'm grateful that the two of us can, you know, each collaborate together. And we felt like we wanted to take those messages more off the mat. So that's where the corporate side of it started to come in because what we talk about in yoga is who you are anywhere is who you are everywhere. Right. And we just bring our whole lives to everything that we do. So we felt like a lot of the messages in yoga, we wanted to try to, increase um the outreach for that also because they're applicable truly everywhere yeah what i'll what i'll add to that is that we we saw that me having my athletic background and jen having you know being a mom and being in the corporate sector that these same things apply to everybody and if we can show that through us showing up and saying like look this is what i've done in my life and i promise you these tools work and that jen can do the same thing that this is what i do in my life these tools work it will help enroll people into just giving things a try and saying, okay, like I'll roll with that or I'll give it a try. Now, did either of you have experience with corporate wellness before, like where you worked, where you saw a program, you're like, I love this. I want to be a part of it. Or did you feel like it was missing and you were like, this is why I want to start it? I guess I can say for myself, uh, I never experienced that. So I, I used to work for Price Waterhouse was my first job out of college. Then I worked at Sony Music. I also worked for, for the Walt Disney Company. This was all in finance. And there was never a wellness program really to speak of. And I think that companies have definitely come a really far way from that as far as being open to that and providing those resources to their employees so for me i felt like i've seen really the other side of it i know what it feels like to work long hours sitting at a desk and to feel that you know stress of deadlines and those kinds of things um, so that helped um, me see that you know we could really link these things up yeah and my, my both my brothers work in the corporate sector and they would always be like steve it's great that you can go do x y and z but I don't have the time to do that. And so I would just listen to other people in the corporate sector. Like, what do you guys need? What, where can we add value? Because Jen and I were only in control of who walked into the yoga studio. But there's all these other people that said, hey, Steve, I wish I could go to your class, but I can't go at this time. Or I wish I could show up to this thing that you're doing, but it's not possible. So Jen and I were like, okay, well, how can we actually bring this to the corporate sector? So we eliminate those excuses and then give people the things that they're already wanting to do. So they're not thinking about, hey, I really want to do this, but I can't actually let's just bring it there so that everybody's cup is full yeah and i should also say that really it's beyond yoga sometimes we do offer yoga classes but what we also feel adds a tremendous amount of value is to talk about mindfulness meditation and really one of our core messages is is discipline actually so we kind of frame everything up um, with that in mind and we feel like that is very powerful because that's what puts agency back into people's hands and ultimately that feels really great for for everybody yeah and no, they I can learn it from they can learn it from somebody that they might be friends with or they could see on the street and just say okay like you guys could teach me like you guys look like you know you're somebody that i could hang out with and so we're bringing it in a real way of just saying these are the things that we do we're bringing it in a modern way and saying give it a try and not that we're perfect at it either. We're totally transparent about that. It's not like we have everything figured out. Uh, we're just trying to share what's been really impactful in a positive way for us. 
And we're trying to also make that real for people. So it's not just a conceptual pie in the sky, you know, unicorns and rainbows type of vision, because that doesn't get anyone very far. We're really results and action oriented. You know, and as we're kind of talking about a lot of changes that have happened in the last few months, and a lot of people are starting to transition back into the office, which can cause a lot of stress on both sides. And so I want to start with the organizational side. Um, How can an organization or a company create a less stressful environment as people return to work? Yeah, I could say acknowledging your staff, making them feel appreciated, making them, you know, if the concept right now is most people have to sit at their desk and they don't have as much interaction, that person to person touch will make people feel way less stressed, not disconnected from the company. And so if I was an organization, I would put in, how are you, how are you appreciating your employees? How are you acknowledging them? Do you have breaks where you can connect to the group, even if it's through Zoom? Is there a fun element to the workplace that people can get a break from just maybe sitting at their desk and feeling alone? So it allows them to say, yeah, I'm going back into work with a little bit of stress. And though I know my bosses, the leadership, the management, they have my back. And on the other side, yeah, the employees- I, I would agree with that. That's okay. Go ahead, Carrie. No, go ahead. You were just a little delayed. Go ahead. I was just going to add to that, that I think the best communication, most transparent communication is just a great place to be. And from, um, from everything that I've seen, you know, organizations that I'm involved with, I know I just appreciate people sharing what they can when they can, even despite all the uncertainties and unknowns. I feel like that helps people to at least feel like those lines of communication are open. Yeah, you know, on the other side, the people that are being asked to come back into the office, there's obviously some stress and fears as well. Do you have maybe some tips or exercises that people can do to kind of manage that stress and overwhelm? I know you've given some breathing exercises before to people at Ingram. What kind of things would you suggest? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think actually, I mean, breathing is a little bit underrated and... (laughs) Of course, we do it all the time unconsciously, and that is something that Steve and I intentionally incorporate into our programs because it really is a very powerful tool. So I would say even as, and what do people tell you if you're stressed or in a situation, the first thing someone will say is take a breath. So I would say even a simple pause and just breathe in for a four count and exhale for a four count. So you start to even out your breath. And what that does is just gets you immediately present and just even notice, you know, your own two feet on the floor or notice yourself sitting in your chair. So all of a sudden you're right here, like grounded in your body, which helps to create some stability. So that's a great place to start. And a phrase that I know we both use and I use it, especially if I'm ever feeling overwhelmed, there are a lot of big issues that are happening right now. And a beautiful and powerful question to ask is what can I take my attention off of and what do I need to put my attention on? So for me, that helps me take my attention off of all those big things out there that I can't control. And what I need to put my attention on is what I can do right here in the moment. And maybe that's asking for help. Maybe that's having a conversation with someone and and not worrying alone or keeping it inside. Um, Maybe that is going for a walk or whatever that might be. I think is, is, is a way to just bring yourself right back to, again, those things that you do have agency over. And, and what I would add to, to what Jen was saying is, is creating a morning and an evening routine. And what that looks like is movement, mindset, and mindfulness. And that could be five minutes. It could be 30 minutes. It could be an hour. It's going to be different every day. It's almost going to be different every week. And then having an evening routine is what do you do to shut yourself down? And so just knowing that you can have this almost ritual, ritualistic way of having the morning and the evening. And so even if you're stressed out, you say, you know what, at least I know I have my morning and my evening routine, as opposed to just going to the day and just seeing what happens and say, I'm just going to walk into this day and just let things come at me. If you have the morning and the evening routine, it helps not come all the way down and it keeps you a little bit above the water each time. And maybe you're really above the water. And those are things that Jen and I, we, we lead in the corporate sector of just helping people out. You know, you've been hosting workshops and seminars and fitness classes in person and online for a while and for multiple corporations as well as Ingram Micro. I'm curious, what have you found that most people struggle with or need help with that you talk about the most in a corporate environment? 
for me, what I see is consistency is the consistent hard work of doing the thing over and over again. We see a lot of people, they'll be amped, they'll start it, they'll do all the things. And then once some sort of roadblock or a couple roadblocks, it's not the first one, they'll start to trickle out. And then it's that hamster wheel of not beginning again. So for me, it's consistency and then the bounce back ability to start again. I know that we're all gonna have off weeks. It's not always gonna look the same. And then having the mindset to say like, I'm gonna begin again and start. So consistency, bounce back ability uh, in the work is, is, is huge. And I would add to that, I'd say something that we've been seeing, especially over the last few months is focus. And I think that can be so challenging when there is, as Steve was saying, so much coming at us all the time every day. So that leads to really some discipline, whether it's discipline of like the phone <laughs> and putting it away for a certain amount of time, staying on a task, um, whatever that might be, doing what you're, you say that you're going to do. And so I think focus is, is important and it, and it is very challenging right now, especially. I'm curious, what role do you think the organizations or a manager has in helping their employees handle their own wellness? I think managers have a huge potential opportunity there um, to really lead by example. Um, at least from my experiences in the corporate world, if, my, if the partner, if the senior manager was on board for something, then we were, we were on board for that. And that, that counted for a lot. So certainly, you know, at the individual level, no matter how junior you are, you can take on these healthy habits and, you know, be a leader from wherever you're sitting. But I do think senior management putting their weight behind initiatives for wellness counts for a lot. Yeah, I agree. The leadership and being the coach of your team and, and leading by example is, is so important. You just feel supported. Now, for the two of you, you've been teaching, obviously, a lot more online these past few months with everything going on. Have you found it to be effective for your audience, or maybe how has it been different or better from what you do in person? I would say that our, we can reach more people, which is great. And so we can reach people that may not be able to get to a studio or get to a fitness class or they have their kids can someone else can be watching their kids for that hour and they don't have to worry about daycare. So we've been able to lead more people and people from all over the country. And for that matter, all over the world during these times, is it the same as being in, in a classroom and getting the energy of people? No, but it's just like adapting to what's needed in the moment and then not quitting everything. So I feel that, and some people are really enjoying it. Some people it works for that Peloton model that's kind of been introduced is, is working for people. And so what we've seen is that we don't have all the answers. We would love everybody to come to the studio, but for some other people, they find enjoyment for being able to just flip their screen on and off and that works for them. So it's good work for us to say that we don't have all the answers and, and sharing these classes with people that they are getting something from it and we should respect that and then continue as we move out of this, it's still possible for us to share this with people even on a different platform and their takeaway is unique to themselves. Mm -hmm. Steve, on your Instagram, you started a morning routine for 73 days, I believe, during quarantine, <laughs> I did. where you went to outdoor locations all over Buffalo, New York, and you started dancing and spreading these positive messages. I'm a dancer myself, so I'm very excited to hear about this. Can you tell us more about where this idea came from and what it was? Yeah, so in November Project Buffalo, we end every single workout with a shout song, which is the theme of the Bills song, but it's also a very popular wedding song. A lot of people know it. And so when we first got in the quarantine, I went up on my roof and I did it one Wednesday morning. And then people started to say like, Steve, I, I really enjoy that. And then I did it another morning. And then we got to the weekend and I was like, what do I do? Do I, do I keep doing it? So then I did it and I eventually got complaints from my neighbors. So I essentially got kicked off of my roof and I was like, okay, well, how can I adapt now? So I'm like, I'm going to go, I know Buffalo very well. I'm going to go to different locations all the time now, maybe do a little bit of history lesson if there's some history there, and then challenge myself to make it fun and interesting for myself. And what it became is the same people started to show up each morning and they got to see their friends there. And it was the consistent of getting up and dancing around, doing jumping jacks, being silly. 
And then I also started co-hosting people from around the world from other November projects or locally to just add a little bit of twist of learn about somebody from Malaysia, learn about somebody from Iceland, or you get to meet somebody from Edmonton during these times of who's Steve going to have on next. And they would lead a little bit of the movement to keep it fun and interesting. And what I wanted to do that is a jump start to your day. That didn't need to be your workout, but if that helped you get out of bed and that helped you get you going, then that was moving the needle forward. And we just started to see so many people saying like, this is the best part of my day. And we just kept it going till essentially I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> that's, that's really what happened after 73 days of waking up and doing that. I was like, okay, I'm complete. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love that. I love the creativity. I think that's important during, especially all the time, but during crazy times like these as well. Yeah. Uh, one of the lines you both use a lot in your seminars is the term leveling up. What does that mean to you and why do you think it's important in corporate wellness? Mm. Steve and I were actually just talking about this uh, this morning is always being in that growth mindset. I guess I would say overall, again, as human beings. And I think it's more challenging even as adults when we're kids, we're just by default going to the next grade in school or our parents are encouraging us to keep participating in activities and keep stepping out of our comfort zone. And that's not necessarily something that happens naturally as adults. But yet, I mean, personally, like something that's very important to both, both of us is not to stop learning, not to stop growing, not to stop challenging our own comfort zones. And so that's what we want to encourage for everybody. I mean, there's no reason why we can't all continue to, to be better for, uh, for, for ourselves and for each other. Yeah, and just to add to that, that what I thought, what worked at 20 doesn't work for me now, and what maybe what worked with me at 30 doesn't work now. And if I continue to be a student or we continue to be students all the time, we can learn new things about ourselves as we age. And that to me is what makes life interesting and, and fun and then the curiosity, but it also what keeps our minds uh, young at age too as well. We all know that neurons that fire together wire together. So if we continue to be in that inquiry, we're gonna continue to feel youthful and feel like we have a purpose as we continue to get older. It also allows us to have conversations with people. If we're in a growth mindset and trying new things, it allows us to relate and talk and meet new people. And you know, I, I, that's one of the things that I miss the most out of this quarantine is being able to meet new people all the time and being around others and learning about others in person. And, and the more that you try new things and level up, the more that you're going to be able to, to have those conversations, which is important. You know, one of the questions we ask on this show all the time is where do you see technology going in the next year? But for the two of you and kind of, you know, adjusting it to your line of work, how do you see the wellness community changing within the next year? I guess I hope and, and certainly my desire is that I'd like to see the wellness community continue to expand and continue to broaden the definition of wellness and, and broaden its, um, its scope and the diversity of the people so that everybody really feels represented and seen in the wellness community. Um, that's something that I'm really educating myself on right now. And that's very important to me. I see that there's not one size fits all. And what, what this technology is giving is people to choose their own adventure with their fitness. You know, someone could take a yoga class from us and say, hey, that's just not for me. And then we can be okay with it. When you're using the technology, now people have the opportunity, even when they listen to Jen and I speak, we're going to give them the tools to say, okay, use these tools and go out and find the things that work for you, as opposed to saying, well, you have to do this, or you have to go to the gym, or you have to run, or you have to do yoga. Find the things that work for you, because that's the long game. If you enjoy doing it, you're going to keep doing it. If you hate doing it, you're not going to do it. And this technology now through Zoom and being able to log on, you could take a 10-minute class, a 10-minute core class, and that might work for you as opposed to, well, I don't want to go to an hour long yoga class. And as this technology moves forward, people will be able to have their own individualistic plan that works for them inside a broader spectrum of corporate wellness, which I think just helps create way more uh, growth uh, into the whole entire sector. And so Jen and I are just help, helping people nudge them along to find those things for themselves. Now, if people want to learn more about either of you or about corporate wellness, or if they're part of Ingram and they want to be more involved in what you're doing with Ingram, where can they do that online social media? 
if they'd like to see more of us at Ingram, and we have enjoyed working with the Ingram community so much. So I'm, I'm going to say that you can reach out to Carrie Kovach. Carrie, hopefully you're okay with me putting your name out there. Um, but Carrie's really been um, a great person for us to work with and has helped to um, move some of these programs out into the Ingram community. So we're very grateful to, to work with her. And then I'll do a little plug for my blog, which is on medium.com. And you can find me at Jennifer Daily Gress if you're interested in reading any of my writing or at Jennifer Daily Gress is my Instagram handle. Yeah, and for myself, it's yoga underscore Steve for Instagram. And you can DM me or hit me up for anything that you have any questions on or any different types of resources. And yeah, get in touch with Carrie. She's been fantastic for us. Jen, right, Jen and I right now are teaching yoga on Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon Eastern Standard Time. And we also have something going on this Friday morning too as well. So just stay tuned on. And we're also open to anything that from the Ingram community would like to see. They can, they can reach out to us and say, have any questions for us, we would be happy to help. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Jen and Steve, for being here, kind of giving us a little something different on this show and, and for all the work you're doing because wellness, whether that's physical, mental, emotional, is extremely important all the time and especially as we're going through this tough time and as people get back to work. So I thank you both for being here and sharing your story and insight. Thank you for having us, Carrie. Thank you so much for having us. You've been listening to B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro. This episode is sponsored by Ingram Micro's President's Club. B2B Tech Talk is a joint production by Sweetfish Media and Ingram Micro. Ingram Micro production handled by Laura Burton and Christine Fan. To make sure you never miss an episode, subscribe today in your favorite podcast player.